lot of people connected it to Alex Guerrero. Just what's your reaction to that? Do you think it's fair? I have no comment. That's yeah, it's just ridiculous. Tom, I'm out. See you guys. Thanks. See you guys. Yo, what's up, YouTube? Your boy, the great picture here, DGP, back again with another episode of Page Your Keys. Yes, Pats Nation, let's stand up. Let's get another shirt, because we got to get, you know, we got to get another one, man. We lost last year, but we're going to get it back. Blitz for Six is on, so y'all already know what it is, man. Again, it's your boy, DGP. If you guys don't know, follow me on Twitter. I got all Patriots news, all up to date, and just, you know, some funny stuff on the side, but quick update, NFL Paid Fave Podcast, the podcast me and my boy Kid the Gamer uh, slash official 414 does. Be sure to check the links in the description below. Uh, we're moving the podcast during the regular season, so uh, if you're still following the podcast on his channel, it'll be on another channel. I will have that link down below, so again, be sure to follow that, and we have some more news coming up, so let's get into the video. As you see, with the, um, the clip that you just saw, Tom Brady walking off, uh, this is training camp news. Tom Brady walking off on the uh, question. Kind of figured that was going to happen. I said in many camp, especially once the suspension happened, uh, more so with him not being there, him and Gronkowski. I said the first couple questions, first day or two, it's going to get annoying. But after that, water under the bridge, and that's pretty much exactly what it is, man. After that, first day question, he walked off. It seemed real mad because it seemed like they was attacking. They'd been attacking this boy, Alex Guerrero. He doesn't want anything to do with the cheating. So, you know, they kind of just said, all right, let's go. We're just going to remove it and that's pretty much it for the Brady question now we have some injuries to report on just not that the really just minor tweaks you know Kenny Britt when the injuries went down we still don't have Michael Mitchell but with injuries could potentially come opportunity and that opportunity can be Eric Decker as we are working him out today so today Eric Decker's working out for the Patriots who has experience under the Josh McDaniel system when he was in Denver and also he has championship experience when he won a title Endeavor. Since he left Denver Broncos, though, he's kind of been going downhill a little bit. He went to the Jets. Then I think he went to the Titans after that. Now he's with potentially with the Patriots. So not a fast guy, but a guy who probably can get some can get some nice route running again, especially if we don't have Edelman first four weeks. Speaking of first four weeks, the thing that we're probably going to run most, and again, this changes week to week, so it, this might not happen, but the thing how we can replace Edelman the most and what I thought would be is we're going to run two tight end sets. Again, a lot of two tight end sets. Not with Dwayne Allen, but with Jacob Hollister. Yes, the undrafted uh, rookie last year um, is getting a lot of time with Tom Brady, man. He's been out there after after practice, before practice. He's been with Gronkowski a lot. So lo it's looking like Hollister's second position be the second time on the team is his for the taking. He still has to, you know, put in the work, grind, but it's looking like that Jacob Hollister might be our second tight end. You guys don't know, I was a big Jacob and Cody Hollister, the twins. I was a big fan of theirs last year, as well as Austin Carr. Uh, so to see Jacob Hollister out there, man, I'm just happy. So two tight ends, two running back sets. Been a lot of Rex Burkett. I thought Burkett would kind of keep the same role as uh, he did last year, but it seems like he might be the actual Deion Lewis replacement uh, for that. So that's some quick news on the offense about that. Uh, other bright spots, Isaiah Wynn, Trent Brown, they love those two, man, especially Trent Brown because he's like 6'8", he's big, he's athletic. I think that we found our replacement left tackle. I think that's what they're going to do with Trent Brown, put him at left tackle. They might even put him at right tackle too, depending on how they, how Marcus Cannon comes back in the, vault, in the fold. But Isaiah Wynn is looking like he's probably going to be a tweener. As you guys know, um, sometimes Dante Garnetchian and – I think last year we had to do it. I think the year before we had to do it too. We did offensive line by committee. But like last year, we had like seven. The year before we had six. It just seems like it's getting increased. Now it looks like we're going to have nine offensive linemen, eight, off, eight, nine offensive linemen by committee. So this is going to be an exciting thing. So that means if one of these guys mess up, you just know they're automatically getting cut. Another guy that they've been loving in training camp, Stephon Gilmore, has taken another step. Uh, has been defending a lot of joint element, defending a lot of passes, man. It just seems like he's going to take over and they're actually being the number one corner, our best corner role, and he's just been focused, locked in, and that's just something that we love to see as Patriot fans, man. Again, Stephon Gilmore locked in for another year, man. Uh, no Malcolm Butler. I guess the the, Wavis, the cornerback across him might be Eric Rowe is what I've been seeing, but it's been kind of mixed up here and there. So defense is a mystery with that second uh, corner row, back row, because I think Eric Rowe is actually going to be the nickel, which he kind of been underperforming. But that's a different video for another day. But, Mal but not Malcolm Butler. I miss Malcolm Butler. But Stephon Gilmore has been pretty big. And another guy that's been huge for us, excuse me, 
uh, as we're going into this training camp field. It's not just uh, Stephon Gilmore, but also um, Kyle Van Noy. He's been pretty good. Dante Hightower, he looks a little bit healthy. Um, Isaiah Wynn, like I said before, they're loving him. Again, speaking of Isaiah Wynn, check out this clip of him catching punts in practice in training camp last night. Actually brought a smile to Belichick's face. Take a look. Again, as I've been talking, I've been showing you some highlights from this year's training camp. So, again, hope you guys enjoyed, man. Be sure to hit the like on the video, subscribe, comment, more Patriot news, more Patriot videos. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, in the next coming week, I'll be gone for about a week. So, I have a couple, two, three highlight videos I'm going to uh, leave queued up that will be released while I'm gone. So, you guys can still catch the highlights slash the lowlights. And, again, let me know how you feel about that. I'm actually enjoying putting highlights and lowlights together because, one, I just love football, and, two, it just it, it just really shows you how close this dynasty that we built can be taken away or how much we could have potentially went to another level if it wasn't for one or two plays, man. Uh, my last video I had talked about Bernard Pollard, the Patriot killer, and without him, maybe we win two, three more Super Bowls. Or if he doesn't hurt these guys, who, who knows, man? It's a butterfly effect, but that's going to be it for the video. Like, subscribe, comment. More Patriot news coming this week before I head out for vacation. And again, check the links down below. And I'll catch you next time, y'all. Peace.